morning children so in the previous lesson we have seen you know uh, all this more spherical in shape and uh, earlier people believed earth as a, a flat body there were people like copernicus then uh, uh, galileo galilei who tried to prove earth is a round in shape uh, ferdinand magellan was a portuguese sailor who sailed from Fra spain across the world and he took around three years time for his team to complete the journey and make it as a proof that earth is a round in shape then uh, yeah the astronauts and the people like uh, uh, neil armstrong and uh, uh, edwin Algen who went to the moon and the astronauts who go to the space have taken the photographs from uh, the moon and uh, it also proved that earth is round in shape okay so <clears throat> let us consider this as a earth let us consider that as a earth now on this earth we have two points one two right so this is on the top part and this is the bottom part or this is called the north pole and this is called the south pole okay this is called the north pole and this is called the south pole right there is a line there is a line that passes through the center of the earth okay See, this north pole is an imaginary point, south pole is also an imaginary point and these are imaginary lines. Imaginary lines means they are not actually there on that. But, but when we uh, draw, uh, make a globe or draw a map, we can, uh, use these kinds of techniques. Okay, so we use, to, we, we draw a line which divides earth into two equal parts. Two equal parts and this line is called equator right so this line that divides earth into two equal parts is called the equator now this line divides earth into two equal parts which are they this is one this is a two isn't it right so this is to the north of equator, this is to the south of equator, is it? Huh? This is on the north of equator, this is to the south of equator. So as this is to the north of equator, we call this northern hemisphere northern hemisphere and this to the south of the equator is called southern hemisphere <clears throat> right so the part of earth to the north of equator is called the northern hemisphere the part of the earth to the south of equator is called the southern hemisphere Hemisphere means half of a sphere. So the entire earth is a spherical shape. Right? So it's a sphere. So it is half. Okay. So this is a half. This is a another half. The second half. That's why they are known as a hemisphere. So the northern part is called the northern hemisphere. And the southern part is called the southern hemisphere. When we observe the globe or the map. We can see a lot of continents are basically in this part. Okay, Asia is in the northern hemisphere, uh, North America is in northern hemisphere, then uh, Europe is in northern hemisphere, a good part of Africa and South America also is in the northern hemisphere. Okay, so as there are more land in the northern hemisphere, the northern hemisphere is also known as a land hemisphere it is also called the land hemisphere and 
This part, the southern hemisphere, is more of a oceans. So that is also known as a ocean. Hemisphere. Right? So, northern hemisphere has most of the continents of the earth, and that is why it is called the land hemisphere. And southern hemisphere has most of the oceans of the world, and that is why it is known as the water hemisphere. Okay, that is land, and this is not ocean, it is a water hemisphere. Right? So, northern hemisphere is known as a land hemisphere because it has most of the continental part of the world, the earth. The southern hemisphere is known as the water hemisphere, water hemisphere because it has most of the ocean part of the world. Right? So, in this part, we are going to learn about the different movements of the earth. So, earth as a planet has got two types of movements. First is called uh, rotation and the second is called revolution. So we will see them one by one, right? So as we saw, this is a model of the earth and uh, there is a north pole and a south pole and there is an imaginary axis. There is an imaginary axis which passes through the north pole and the south pole on which the earth rotates. Okay, so the movement of the earth on its own axis is called a rotation. But uh, as far as the earth is concerned, when it comes to the movement, rotation, we need to consider the north pole not exactly on the top and this, it has got a 66 and a half degree. Angulation. It comes like this. Okay, so it comes like uh, this. Right? So this is the angle, this is the angle in which we have this uh, axis. And on this axis, the earth moves from west to east. Okay, in this direction. Right? So the movement of the earth on its axis, which is tilted by a 66 and a half degree. This is 90 degree, no? This is a 65 or 66 and a half degree. Right? So, the axis which is tilted to a 66 and a half degree is on which the earth has its first movement and that is called a rotation. The rotation of the earth is actually from west to east. Okay? And the time taken for one complete revolution is, uh, sorry, rotation is a uh, 24 hours. The time taken for a one complete rotation is a 24 hours, and that is what we call as one day. Okay, so the time taken for the earth to complete one rotation is a simply one day, which has got a 24 hours in that. Okay, so this is because of this rotation of this earth, the some part of the earth gets a sunlight and other parts are darks. Okay, so the day and the night is actually formed because of this particular movement of the earth called the rotation. Right? So days and nights are formed because of the rotation movement of the earth because uh, when the earth rotates, what happens is if the sun is located here, the sun rays comes out of here, it falls on the earth and this part of the earth will receive the sunlight and that part is known as a day and the other part which doesn't receive the sunlight is known as a night. Okay, so the total duration taken by the earth to complete one particular rotation is a 24 hours or that is called a 
one day. So the rotation of the earth is happening on an imaginary line that connects or pass through the north pole and the south pole that is called the axis and uh, it is tilted by 66 and a half degree uh, to the east. Right? Now, the second movement of the earth is called the revolution. So as we know, as the earth rotates on its own axis, it has another movement around the sun also. Isn't it? So imagine this is the sun and this is the earth. Okay, so the earth as it rotates on its own axis, the earth moves around the sun also. Right? So this movement of the earth around the sun is called a revolution. Right? The movement of the earth on its own axis is called a rotation. The movement of the earth around the sun is called a revolution. And the time taken to and the direction is again from west to east. Right? Now, the time taken for one complete revolution is 365 days and 6 hours. Right? For the earth to complete one particular revolution, to come back to the same place where it was earlier, it takes 365 days and 6 hours. So, once in 4 years, what happens is, so 365 Point six, three sixty five point six, three sixty five point six, and then three sixty five point six. So now here, what happens is this become one day, isn't it? Twenty four hours is one day. Okay. So usually, what we calculate is we consider three sixty five days in a year, and on the fourth year. This day will be added. Means this 18 hours in the previous 3 years will be added here and then we get a leap year. Okay? Right? <clears throat> so the total time taken for a, a revolution to complete it is a 365 and a days and a 6 hours. So when we calculate this 6 hours together once in 4 years, we will have one day extra that makes it to 366 and that is called a leap year. Okay? And which month do we add this particular day? Yeah, it's added to the month of February. Right? Okay. Now, what are the uh, advantages or uh, use the, that we have with the movement of this earth around the sun? We know day and night is caused because of a rotation of the earth and we have a seasons. We have a seasons as the earth move around the sun. Right? So, which are the major seasons that we have? We have a summer. We have a winter, we have a spring, we have a autumn. Okay, for the four major seasons that we have are summer, winter, spring and autumn. Right? So summer season, winter season, spring season and autumn season are the four major seasons that we have and these seasons are caused because the earth moves around the sun and in different parts when we reach for example here it's very long here it will be short here again the distances change so because of this changes in the distances that the earth finds itself from the sun we have different seasons Okay, so the earth has two major movements, rotation and revolution. Rotation is the movement of the earth on its own axis, that is tilted by 66 and a half degree to the east. It rotates from west to east, we get days and nights because of that. The total duration for the earth to complete one, rotation is 24 hours or one day. The second movement of the earth is a 
revolution revolution is the movement of the earth around the sun it takes 365 days and 6 hours to complete one revolution this is 6 hours every year is calculated as one single day in every 4 years and when we calculate in, in that way we get one day extra on every 4th year we call that a leap year and this day will be added to the month of February which makes it up to have 29 days so the revolution of the earth causes seasons the major seasons that we have are summer, winter, spring and autumn ok so the next is uh, uh, some lines that we draw on the globe some imaginary lines known as uh, latitudes and longitudes so in the beginning we have seen that the north pole and the south pole okay so there are two polar regions here this is called the north pole and this is called the south pole and uh, there is an imaginary line that passes through the center of the earth we call it the equator right so there are some more lines that run parallel to this and uh, they are okay and uh, there are some other lines also which uh, comes from uh, pole to pole okay so these are the two types of lines that we draw on the earth and uh, this is the line that passes through the center of the earth that is called the equator and these lines are called the latitudes okay the lines that run from pole to pole are known as the longitudes okay so equator are lines that run parallel uh, from pole to pole means here we have a line and to parallel to that there is another line there is another line to its parallel it goes on like that okay they are known as a latitudes or a parallels right the other longitudes they start from the north pole and end from the south pole every longitude start from the north pole and end at the south pole and they are also known as meridians okay so latitudes are also known as parallels longitudes are also known as meridians right so uh, the lines that run parallel from north pole till the south pole are known as the latitudes and the lines that starts from north pole to the south pole is called longitudes latitudes are also known as the parallels longitudes are also known as the meridians right so now we will do it a bit in detail about the both the uh, longitudes and latitudes okay so equator is the most important of all latitude equator is the most important of all latitude that is known as the zero degree latitude okay so from here north pole is 90 degree north south pole is 90 degree south so from equator which is a zero degree uh, latitude for every degree there is a parallel running until the north pole and until the south pole 
So we have 90 parallels in the northern hemisphere and 90 parallels in the southern hemisphere. As all these lines run parallel to each other without touching anywhere, they are known as a parallels. Okay? So they do never touch each other. Latitudes will never touch each other. The total number of latitudes we have on the earth is 181, including the equator. Right? So uh, there are 90 in the uh, northern hemisphere and 90 in the southern hemisphere. We want to consider all these lines, but uh, both in the northern and southern hemisphere, some latitudes are important and some are not that important. Okay? So both in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, we have uh, some important and uh, some unimportant things. So which are the important uh, latitudes? Sixty-six and a half degree north is one. The second is a twenty-three and a half degree north. Twenty-three and a half degree south, and then sixty-six and a half degree south. These are. This is 0 degree. Okay. So these are the major uh, parallels or, or latitudes. Okay. So 66 degree, 66 and a half degree north latitude, 23 and a half degree north latitude, 0 degree latitude, 23 and a half degree south latitude. 66 and a half degree south latitude. So this 66 and a half degree north latitude is known as the Arctic Circle. Okay. So the 66 and a half degree north latitude is known as the Arctic Circle. Right. 66 and a half degree north latitude is known as the Arctic Circle. The 23 and a half degree north latitude is known as a Tropic of Cancer. Okay, they are known as a tropical regions, right? So, 23 and a half degree north latitude is known as a Tropic of Cancer. Now, we have the 0 degree one, that is a equator. Then, 23 and a half degree south latitude is known as a Tropic of Capricorn. Tropic of Capricorn. And the 66 degree, 66 and a half degree south latitude is known as an Antarctic Circle. Okay. So these are the major latitudes we have on the Earth. Right? The most important is equator, which is a 0 degree latitude. 23 and a half degree north latitude is known as a tropic of cancer. 66 and a half degree north latitude is known as a arctic circle. 23 and a half degree south latitude is known as a tropic of Capricorn. And uh, uh, 66 and a half degree south latitude is known as an Antarctic circle. Right? So have a look at this uh, diagram and uh, observe it carefully. So the other set of lines that we have on the earth is the lines that runs from pole to pole, from the, that originates at the north pole and ends at the south pole, like a, uh, this one. It goes on like this, okay? So they start from the north pole and ends at the south pole. When we consider on the top pole, if this is north pole, there will be 
lines starting at every degree and we have 360 such lines running from north pole to the south pole. Okay, these lines are known as the longitudes. Okay, these lines are known as the longitudes or so these lines are also known as the meridians. Right? So in this, the zero degree longitude is known as a the zero degree longitude is known as a prime meridian. Prime meridian or the Greenwich meridian. The prime meridian or the Greenwich meridian because uh, it actually passes through Europe and uh, there is a place called uh, Greenwich near London through which this uh, line passes. Okay, so that is why this is known as a Greenwich Meridian or the Zero Meridian and from here this is considered as the Eastern part and this is considered as the Western part. Okay, so uh, the lines that uh, starts from uh, the North Pole to the South Pole are known as a Longitudes. They are 360 in number. They are also known as the Meridians. The zero degree meridian or the zero degree longitude is the line that passes through Greenwich, right? And uh, mm, yeah, there are 180. There are 180 longitudes to the east of the zero meridian and 180 to the west, right? So this east and west directions and meridians are basically used for time calculation. Okay, we use the prime meridians or the meridians or the longitudes basically for a time calculation. So in the year uh, 1984, sorry, in the year 1884, okay, in the year 1884, there was a conference, an international conference was held at uh, Washington D.C. Washington DC. Do you know what Washington DC is? Yeah, Washington DC is actually the capital of United States of America. Washington DC is the capital of United States of America. There happened uh, an international conference in 1884 and it was about deciding the time around the globe. So in this uh, conference, what they have decided is the 180 degree meridian means the one that falls if this is a the zero degree meridian the opposite one right if this is a the zero degree meridian the Greenwich meridian when we look from the top of it we can find another line going on the opposite side of it isn't it that is a 180 degree meridian that is considered as the 180 degree meridian is considered as a international time line okay it's not time line it's a day line sorry international time line is greenwich meridian Okay, so zero degree uh, longitude is a time line, and a one eighty degree longitude is a is a day line. For example, imagine this is the one eighty degree meridian. Okay, on Monday, and when it when you uh, cover this, it comes as of uh, 
this is USA region and this is a Asia region. This a line falls exactly in between these two region, right? So on Monday you started and Monday itself you crossed this line. But once when you cross this line, you have to change yourself to Tuesday. Means the time, the date has to be changed into Tuesday. Imagine on Saturday you started from Asia. Okay, and by Saturday noon itself you have crossed this line. But what happens? Huh? You reach us here on a Friday. Okay. So, international timeline is adjusted in such a way that the entire uh, time zones will not get uh, collapsed. Okay. So, 180 degree meridian is known as the international date line. Clear? So, meridians are other names of longitudes. Longitudes starts from the north pole to the south pole. There are 360 meridians around the globe. And zero degree longitude is known as a prime meridian which passes through yeah, the place called Greenwich near London in England. That is known as an international time line. The time at different places is calculated based on this line. Okay, then uh, in 1884, there was an international conference happened that uh, in uh, Washington DC, the capital of United States of America. It was about uh, designing an international date line. So the line opposite to this uh, zero degree longitude, which becomes a 180 degree longitude on the other side of the globe is considered as an international date line and uh, it is considered the Asia and uh, American regions have got a day's difference when we calculate it based on the time. Right? So 180 degree meridian is known as an international date line, zero degree longitude of the prime meridian on the Greenwich meridian is called the international time line. Right? So we have seen the two types of uh, lines that we have on this earth, uh, the parallels are also known as the latitudes and the meridians or the longitudes. Okay, so when you observe the globe or a map, we can see these kinds of lines crossing over that. Right? And uh, this actually forms a formation called the grid. A uh, grid formation. Okay, the latitudes and the longitudes together form a grid formation. And this grid formation actually helps us in uh, identifying different places. For example, uh, it says 19 degree north, 73 degree east. Yes. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to check 19 degree north. North means parallels, means there's a north and the south always comes on a La, sorry, latitudes and uh, east and the rest comes on uh, longitudes. Okay, so when we see this thing, the 19 degree north, we need to check the parallel. So, so this is a zero, and uh, here is a 19 degree. Right now, we need to check 73 degree east. So, this is a zero degree, and uh, yes. Here it comes. So when we cross check this, this particular point where the latitude and the longitude meet, 
This is what is a 19 degree north and a 73 degree east. And we check when we check this particular location on a map, we can see a place over there, and that is a Mumbai. Right? So if we have to locate different places on this earth, we make this a grid combination formed by the latitudes and the longitudes. Okay, so a combination of, there is no other place in this world which can come on this particular latitude, longitude combination. Right? On this grid combination, there is no other place on this world can come over there. Okay, so this grid system that is formed by the latitudes and longitudes actually helps us to form a grid combination with which we can easily identify the location of different places. Right, so that is for the lesson part and in the next class we will deal with the exercises or activities from this lesson. Okay, so till then take care.